This had to be one of the most perplexing experiences, and I've had a few that I've ever encountered. All of a sudden, I found myself to be in a lucid state. I was not dreaming. The biggest barrage of sounds, like waves crashing and chirping, clicking, but I couldn't wake myself up. I couldn't manage to, to rouse myself to become fully awake. What on earth is this? Shortly after this happened, I started getting the high-pitched ear ringing. I think it's clear to say that the rules of an engagement of how we are both sending and receiving information have changed. I mean, look, we're, we're dealing with something that is striking, I would say, far too many people to be easily dismissed. Right now on Higher Journeys with Alexis Brooks. Hi, everyone. I hope by now you've had a chance to watch or listen to my recent interview with Mary Rodwell, where we discussed the phenomenon, the ubiquitous phenomenon of ear ringing. We also talked about light language and we talked about repeating numbers and how all of these may be telling when connected together a bigger story. This interview has done very well. I've heard from many of you. Mary has heard from many of you. And so I thought it would be worth it to have a little commentary, go a little bit deeper into what may be behind all of this phenomena that include particularly the ear ringing. I've got some interesting things and some tidbits as well as a few of your comments that I'd like to address during this conscious commentary episode. I mean, look, we're, we're dealing with something that is striking, I would say, well, we can't necessarily say everyone, certainly, but far too many people to be easily dismissed. Now, I want to say up front, I have had tinnitus, as many of you have. As a matter of fact, I have a sound clip I'm going to play for you a little bit later as to what it is believed tinnitus sounds like versus the ear ringing that a lot of people are hearing these days. So we're going to do a little contrast and comparison. Now, I want to get into the ear ringing. I want to get into your comments a little bit and, and dive a little bit deeper, kind of as a takeoff as to what Mary and I talked about. But I also want to talk about a little bit about what Mary has referred to as light language or star language. I want to bring up something. I want to make sure you stay to the end because I have an interesting, had kind of an interesting epiphany uh, as I was re-listening to my conversation with Mary about this equally uh, perplexing phenomenon of light language and uh, how so many people are engaged in it, not to mention the young people. So without further ado, let's get into it. I want to share with you first uh, a story, a true story of mine. It happened, oh, I'm going to say about four or so years ago when I was in my former home up in Massachusetts. This had to be one of the most perplexing experiences, and I've had a few that I've ever encountered. And here's, let me set the stage for you. I had been relaxing in, in our uh, back room, which was kind of a, a study for me, uh, on the couch and fell asleep. And all of a sudden, I found myself to be in a lucid state. I was not dreaming. I was definitely in what, what could be considered maybe even a hypnagogic or even hypnopompic state. It's an in-between state, but a lucid state nonetheless. And I've got to tell you guys, I all of a sudden got the, the biggest barrage of sounds like waves crashing and chirping, clicking, sort of this mix of sounds coming in very, very loud, waves crashing. I didn't know if it was birds chirping or something else chirping. Um, Gosh, I wish I could remember just just this confluence of sounds that were happening, and I did not know what was going on. Now, I, being in kind of a, um, a twilight sleep state, again, somewhat aware of what was going on, I thought, oh my God, did I leave the stereo on? Did I leave the sound system on? I felt like I needed to wake up and turn the volume down, but I couldn't wake myself up. I couldn't manage to to rouse myself to become fully awake. And I just kind of let it happen. And I remember just kind of sitting there taking this and going, what on earth is this? Or off, <laughs> as it were. I was eventually able to wake myself up. And when I fully woke up, I realized there was no sound, none whatsoever. And yet the sound that was coming in was so deep and so intense and otherwise disturbing, except for the fact that I could not move to 
turn down what I thought was the volume to my to my sound system. Um, now, shortly after this happened, and I want to say this is right around February of 2020, I started getting the high-pitched ear ringing, not in one ear, but both ears. As a matter of fact, I want to play a clip for you because uh, I commented on this back in 2020. I'm going to pull up this clip for you uh, where someone else had also been having this very anomalous sound. I want you to note the date and see when it may have happened for you. I know that a lot of people have been talking about this going on uh, for many, many years, but a lot of people started talking about this back around the 2019, 2020 timeframe. Let me play this clip for you and then I'll comment on the back end. Very interesting. This is my comment back in 2020. A very strange sound, not just in one ear, but in both ears. For the first time ever, we know about tinnitus. There are a lot of other theories as to what may be causing the ringing. I have tinnitus. I have the ringing typically in my right ear. On the day that you sent me this message, Damon30, I had a high frequency ringing in both ears. What, what was going on? Has, has anyone else had that? Okay, there you have it. Has anyone else had that? Well, obviously we've heard from a lot of you, uh, not just, just recently, but back in 2020, uh, that indeed this sort of high pitched ear buzzing or ear ringing was happening to a lot of people. Now we're going to address the tinnitus aspect, but I think it's an important to note that the, the, the timing of this for me, and I, like many of you, I, I find myself d doing a lot of dot connecting, right? So I know that, uh, well, I, I of course recall that in January of 2020, I had uh, just returned from Australia after giving uh, my second lecture there. And uh, I remember when I came back to the States, I had noticed that something was different in my neighborhood. The streetlights had changed. I believe they had changed them out to LED. And my first inclination was to question, could the LED light bulbs be affecting my, uh, well, in this case, you would think it would be affecting your sight, but in this case, could it be affecting uh, my senses, my 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 sound, uh, or, or the, the sounds that I was taking in? It was just a thought, something that I wanted to take note of. I want to comment on that a little bit later because some one of you in the audience that watched my show with Mary had something very interesting to say about that. But the bottom line is it's been happening ever since. It started in February of 2020 and it continued uh, in earnest and, and does to this day. Now, the question is, what is it? <laughs> Are we talking about some sort of anomaly um, that could be artificially generated or some form of interference, perhaps. Um, are we talking about the fact that, I mean, look, our planet is changing. The, the, the cosmos is changing. The magnetosphere, that, that which protects us from everything outside of uh, this system of ours has, has diminished drastically. It's changed. Are we indeed, because in part because of that, dealing with some form of non-human intelligence that is trying to connect with us. Many, many questions uh, we have. I want to read a comment from Jodia2239 uh, on that note who comments the following. She says, I've had ringing in my ears that wasn't pleasant lately. More so, I've seen ships by the sun coming in and out of the moon, visiting and appearing, orbs, etc., now, I know that there are benevolent frequencies, but no one has mentioned the possibility and most likely the nefarious frequencies from cell towers, pulsing blue lights, cell phones, the internet of bodies, wireless body area network, and how these backbone systems communicate with, without our consent to our bio field. And she goes on. So what's happening here now she and please forgive me because i'm assuming that this is a she I, i'm seeing a female there but if, if not forgive me in the name we I, i've asked this question uh myself uh jodia 2239 as to what may be the impetus for these 
uh, strange, not again, not just the sounds, but as well, uh, different experiences that people are having, seeing the repeating numbers for that matter, speaking in different languages that we're going to get to. And I mean, star languages that we're going to get to in a minute. Let me play another clip for you. This is from my uh, recent interview with Mary, where she sort of touched on this idea that uh, there are uh, certain programs going on and perhaps some rewriting of those programs. Let me have you take a look at this and we'll pick it up on the back end. Many of the individuals tell me, and I've come across this very recently with a, an Indigenous lady who lives locally. She's um, become a really good friend. And we. she said, Mary, you know, right from very when she was a young child, she used to be talking to the old ones and was told not to do it because people were afraid that... Um, didn't feel it was right that she should be doing that. So she closed off to a certain extent that has opened up recently. And she's done pages and pages of different types of script. And sometimes it will go diagonally. Sometimes it will go left to right, right to left. And she said, and they keep pushing me. They keep pushing me. She's an artist as mm -hmm. well. She's bringing in the frequencies there. But she had no idea what she was doing until she showed me. And I said, you do realize these are the codes. These are from the downloads and what have you. She had not a clue only wow. that she was being um, pushed to do this and being told this is what you need to do. And, of course, there will be many that are listening to this that know that this is what they're doing too and wondering right. why they're encouraged to do it. These are some of the reasons that I've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Because what it's doing, and if you've got intelligences that want to move us to another ac uh, to access higher consciousness and higher frequencies, there's a lot of stuff that we've been programmed into that we need to release and yes. let go because it's getting in the way of that. You know that one of the programs is that you can't trust anything other than your five senses. We all know that's rubbish, but it's a program and it's a strong one that comes in through education, science, um, psychology, um, all, all the different ways we get told not to trust that part of ourselves. And that's a huge program. So many of these these different codes that are coming in are rectifying that. So the question becomes, could there be some form of artificial, I say artificial, non-organic interference or interception that could also be rooted in these very strange sounds, the ear ringing that people are having that may be trying to intercept what Another form of intelligence that would be more on the benevolent side, more vested in our uh, uh, raising our consciousness that are trying to rewrite the programming that has heretofore been not for our good, not for our highest good. And I think that Mary kind of touched on that. Now, obviously, in this part of the, the uh, conversation, she was talking about an indigenous woman that she knows quite well, who was writing in this very strange sort of coded uh, um, script. Um, this sort of goes with the package between the, the star or light language, the written uh, code, as well as uh, the, the sounds. I mean, look, we are being bombarded with a whole new set of uh, ways of engaging, ways of communicating, but who and what are we communicating with? Obviously, we're, none of us can be certain, most of us, uh, are, are still asking the question, where is this emanating from? But I, I give it very, very serious um, time to, to contemplate if, in fact, we are in communication, whether our conscious self realizes it or not, with a form of non-human intelligence, that being beings from, well, extraterrestrial, interdimensional, extra-dimensional, spirit beings, orbs, I mean, so many labels, but that which we consider broadly non-human intelligence. Would it be that surprising? I mean, look, we have looked at hundreds, if not thousands of cases, I say the collective within the field of ufology and individuals who are uh, who have talked of being in constant contact with these beings. But with, with that interaction comes a different form of communication telepathic communication. I brought this up on the show before. We have, perhaps we're not giving ourselves enough credit because we have the capacity to communicate in these ways. How is it that we're able to receive downloads, many people refer to it as, from the beings, 
but also find ourselves telepathically communicating back to them. So this is obviously not a normal mode of communication that we're aware of on a day-to-day basis. So is it so far-fetched that along with that sort of capability that we have, we also have the ability of receiving in the form of the buzzing, which may be a lot more than just the buzzing that we're hearing or the ear ringing, the high-pitched ear ringing, but speaking in the light languages, uh, as well as, uh, you know, writing in this very unique code. I'd love to hear from you, uh, those of you that are not only maybe hearing the ringing or the very strange high-pitched tone, but are you, do you also find yourself even wanting to speak in another sort of language, I guess, as you know, I started to say dialect, but it's far more than that. Do you find yourself, even if you're not maybe all the way there, do you find yourself uh, wanting to write in a script that is foreign to you? I'd like to hear from you. I think it's very important. I think it's just very important that we keep this conversation going because something is trying to get our attention and not only get our attention to say, hey, there may be some other form of communication going on, but to be able to decipher that which we are engaging in. So we're going to keep this conversation going. I want to read a comment. I want to make sure that I'm reading the right comment here. Well, here's here's a couple of things. There, there are a couple of comments that I want to get to, but this is one that I found interesting. This is from Maria Christina C2. I hope I'm saying that right. Maria Christina C2. She says, what an awesome conversation with Mary and myself uh, with such great data and insight. I just love this. I've been hearing high pitched ear ringing in one ear or the other almost daily. So this conversation was exciting talking about this. There is so much that we don't know that we know. I often wonder if there's some aspect of myself that completely understands what my human is perceiving. Fascinating stuff. Uh, Maria Christina C2, that is a fantastic comment. And I think I did actually answer you on that, or at least just uh, remark about how insightful that is of you. I've asked the same question myself. As we are going through these experiences that seem so foreign to us, is there an aspect of us that knows absolutely every aspect of what the buzzing is, what the the high pitched tone is, what the light language is that we're speaking, even though we may not be able to consciously decipher it? Is there some other part of us that does know and is perhaps living leading a completely different life under those rules of engagement? So I think that's very, I think that's definitely uh, worth noting. You know, something else that Mary said uh, in our conversation, if you haven't seen it, by the way, by all means, click on the link below and I probably will have a little I card at the top so you can, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, that is where you can uh, go ahead and tune in. Something Mary said uh, in our recent conversation uh, really got me to thinking this is something that we can really work on. And that is when you are in, let's say, a meditative session or just some quiet time and your ears are buzzing, they're ringing like mine are often are. simply ask of your higher self or that which you feel has the awareness, that part of you that has the awareness, what are you trying to share with me? What are you trying to show me? What are you trying to tell me? It may not, the answer may not emerge with the first request, but maybe doing it over and over again, you will get some sort of insight as to what may be going on. I mentioned in the conversation with Mary that I have on occasion used the high pitched sound uh, to use as a focal point for meditation uh, because we know it can be hard enough to focus on anything when you're in a meditative session, but something that is so um, persistent, particularly if it may be coming from, uh, let's just say a non-human or, 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 otherworldly source might actually be a good idea to do. But while you're doing that, you might want to simply put out, or rather than even ask, maybe be a little bit more definitive about it and make an intention. I intend to understand what this is all about, whatever the answer may be. Now, I want to uh, read another comment, uh, also a question. Uh, this coming from the Bearded Seeker 5633. And they ask the following, or they comment and then ask the following. They say, I've been hearing occasional clicking sounds in my left ear for a few years, but lately I've noticed I have constant tinnitus in mainly both ears. I'm not sure how you differentiate what is and isn't tinnitus. So that's what I'm calling it. 
It never goes away, just has different levels of intensity. I think that's a good question. I mean, a lot of us, uh, tinnitus, I don't know if it's tinnitus or tinnitus, I tend to call it tinnitus, uh, is well known and, and is experienced by millions of people uh, across the, the world. And it does have a sound that has been recorded. I'm actually going to play a recording for you. Let's do it right now. Let's listen to what is considered to be a classic tone that is indicative of tinnitus. And then we're going to compare it to this other sound. Listen to this. So this is a very distinct kind of a, a ringing, I would say, and it has more of a, t a musical, if that makes sense, tone to it than what I'm experiencing. I'm going to share that with you. I have always called the sound and I have had that sound. I have had it. Have you? Let me know. The other sound that emerged for me in February of 2020, I remember distinctly to this day, is more of what I refer to as a white noise a white noise. It's probably the only way I could explain it. And, you know, it's very difficult because you're experiencing this internally, even though you can hear it, you want so badly for other people to know what you're hearing. But I was able to dig up a sound that came very close to what I'm hearing. It's not exact, but it's very close. Let's listen to this. And I would be anxious to hear from you as to whether this may be what you're experiencing as well. Listen to this. Is anyone hearing that sound or ex experiencing that sound? I want to be clear, and I mentioned this in, in the interview with Mary, I question whether the sound is actually audible or maybe coming from some other internal, I mean, obviously we're hearing it, we're hearing it in our head, but is it really in our ears or is it emanating or being broadcast from somewhere else? Uh, but nonetheless, that is the sound or as close to the sound that I hear, interestingly, every other day. Now, I have it as I'm speaking to you right now, but it's at a very low level. The following day, in almost every case, the following day, the alternate day will be very loud and pronounced. That in and of itself uh, makes me call into question what the origin of this is. It has a, a very distinct pattern to it where it's every other day. It, you know, every other day it's very loud and very noisy. Another uh, thought that, you know, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on. Fascinating. So, in some, and I want to cover light language as well before we end this little conscious commentary, but in some, guys, I think it's clear to say that the rules of an engagement of how we are both sending and receiving information have changed? Are we dealing with, is, is this a spiritual process you know, or a practice? I don't know if we'd call it a practice because it seems to be sort of thrust on us. Whereas in a spiritual practice, we're kind of igniting these sorts of uh, um, experiences. It's hard. It's hard to differentiate. It really is hard to just kind of put these lines of demarcation and say, this is a spiritual experience. This is a, you know, this is a, uh, Whatever it may be, the bottom line is many of us are having it. And what do we do with it? What is it that we do with this bombardment of sound and speaking these different, uh, the, these in, in toning even, um, things that we're not consciously doing, they are happening to us. What do we do with it? Again, I think that it is important to be very, to be resolute about getting to the bottom of what where this is coming from. Is there some interference happening here that is not natural? And if so, it's time to go away. It's time for that to stop and for the real communication to come in, if indeed it is coming from some form of assistance, help, connection with these other beings that do have our best interest at heart. So I want us all to take this very seriously, because it's something that I don't think is going to go away. In fact, I think it's probably going to intensify. Let's end on this. <clears throat> I want to talk about light language. Let's address that a little bit, because we did talk about that uh, in my interview with Mary. Another comment that comes in from Joe D. 279 
This is what they say. They say, thank you so much. Always love listening to Mary's stories and experiences. So here's what she says. My son, when he was a toddler, had his own language for a long time. My great granddaughter also has her own language that she intermingles in her talks to us. I also get a high pitch that comes and goes. Interesting that it is a common experience. She, she also says also prayers out to Mary for whatever is going on in her life. Thank you so much, Joe D279. Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, we have in more recent years to use this uh, terminology we call star language or light language as it pertains to the possibility that we may be speaking languages from other um, species of intelligence that we're connected to. But my sense is that this has been going on forever. Speaking languages that are completely alien, forgive the term, to the normal experience, uh, languages that can't be identified. I'm reminded, well, there's, there's two instances that I want to bring up. Let's talk about baby talk. We call it baby talk, right? The gaga goo goo, the unintelligible, you know, uh, jumble of, of sounds that a baby makes. And I've always asked the question, do they know what they're saying or are, are they speaking another language that they may have brought from where they just came from? They haven't been on the planet that long, but if you subscribe to the idea that the soul continues forever, could they be, could they be speaking a language? And I, I kind of chuckle about it because it's cute. Baby talk is cute, right? But is there something more to it? I don't know. It's just very interesting. And have you ever seen a baby who will just go on and on and on and on? And they're just convinced that they're they're saying something that you understand. But of course you don't. Could it be something more? Question mark. Okay, that's one. But here's something that's even, uh, even more intriguing to me and something that uh, maybe some of you have heard of. And that is something that is called speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. It's often associated with individuals who consider themselves extremely religious. It could be uh, uh, something that will happen to them during uh, 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 service uh, or some sort of prayer. My grandmother, actually, uh, many years ago, I witnessed, I think maybe once or twice, her speaking in tongues, and it was just the most amazing thing. I've talked about it on the show uh, on a couple of occasions, but I was quite young when it happened, and I remember it happened shortly after uh, a relative of ours had passed away, and she had just gotten word uh, of her pa- of her dying, and went into this completely just altered state where she started speaking this very very uh, unidentifiable language. And then when she came out of this state, I, I said, Granny, what did you just say? And she said, What are you talking about? She had no idea that she had started speaking in this language. Uh, I looked up the speaking in tongues. This is something that I'd actually like to cover more on the show because wouldn't it be interesting to trace back and find that there may be some origins uh, that are connected to this idea that we are in touch with non human intelligence and that these languages speaking in tongues, at least in some cases, may come uh, from that that realm or those realms. But I looked it up and I wanted to just share with you what I found in terms of the research on what it said about the history of speaking in tongues. It says, the phenomenon of speaking in tongues, also known as glossolalia, is primarily associated with certain religious or spiritual practices, particularly within Pentecostal and charismatic Christian traditions. In these contexts, speaking in tongues is believed to be a spiritual gift or a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. From a psychological perspective, glossolalia is often described as a form of altered state of consciousness or trans-like state where individuals produce speech-like sounds that may resemble language but typically lack the structure and syntax of any known human language. This can involve repetitive symbols, sounds, or even entire phrases that are perceived as having spiritual significance by the speaker and their community. Hmm. Any known human language? Well, I would dare say that what's described as speaking in tongues would be considered non-human, eh? Question mark. There are so many mysteries to the human experience, right? And there's so many mysteries as to who and what we're uh, in touch with living our lives with in many cases, 
that are outside of the realm of normal human experience. Again, guys, this is a conversation I want to keep going. Please, I totally encourage you to comment. Give me your thoughts on what we what we talked about today. And uh, any ideas as to where you may want to take this conversation going forward. Uh, I'm going to have on some additional guests that can maybe give their way in on these phenomena that are happening. We're talking about, and we can add to the list now, uh, strange writing. You know, we can touch on that for a moment. Automatic writing. Many people do it. I have done it in the process of writing my book. I had uh, taken some notes and found myself writing in a script that was legible, but uh, where it felt like it was coming from someplace else. So it seems as though all of the uh, all of the things that we use to function in normal life, we speak, we hear, we write, are also being utilized in ways that we are not quite grasping yet. You know, there are these amazing paintings that people are doing that feel, and I've interviewed several people on the show that have uh, said that they've brought through some of these intelligent beings through drawing when they had not drawn before some of the most beautiful pieces of art that have emerged from these communications. I mean, the bottom line is it all goes back to a form of communication, whether it's through the written word, the spoken word, or what we're hearing. So with that, I'm going to let it go for now. Again, fascinating stuff, not going anywhere uh, anytime soon, I don't think. So if it's not going anywhere, let's not go anywhere. Let's keep talking about it. Let me hear from you. Thank you so much. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode of both Conscious Commentary and Higher Journeys with Alexis Brooks. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.